Hi there, I'm Jukka Lavonen from Cool Basic Organization and in this video I'm going to introduce to you a very special application. It's an internal tool that the Cool Basic development team uses and thus it's not really available to public. However, it's a nice piece of software so I decided to share it with you guys anyways. Before we begin though, I would like to walk you through a few main concepts that are very important. Okay, so first we have languages, such as Cool Basic Classic. A language is just a tool that you use to write programs. Practically, we mean compilers here. And secondly, we have these execution systems that you write your programs for, like a game engine. These two are separate from each other, although you utilize them both to create games. The reason they are not directly bound to each other is that imagine that you could use any language to write games but still using the same graphics engine or physics engine. You basically take advantage of the exact same command set provided by the target framework regardless of language you choose. Now let's take a look how the whole concept actually works. Uh, and to answer your question how to uh, link these two main concepts uh, together is the project type. It's the third player in this whole big picture. And uh, this project type tells actually to the editor how to build this project and so you specify basically the language that you use so the uh, editor can use the appropriate uh, editing controls and you also specify in this project type the target framework which is in in this case uh, our cool west game engine then you write your source code normally and uh, when you click at the build action it will send the source to Google Basic Classic Compiler. But as you will probably use uh, commands and functions uh, of the target framework, uh, for example, loading objects or driving screen, uh, the Google Basic Classic Compiler needs to be aware of those functions because remember, uh, the compiler itself doesn't know about the target framework. So, what we need to do is to uh, actually pass this framework definition file here to the compiler and uh, the definition file uh, basically ha has a list of functions and constants and other symbols so the cool basic classic compiler can recognize them and as uh, the compiler now has uh, all the sufficient information uh, it will uh, be able to create this object file which is then uh, passed to cool best linker which will append to uh, append uh, the byte code to the end of the virtual machine and that's basically how it works okay so let's get started with our little demo here i'm going to launch my application from the desktop shortcut here and this is the default appearance of the editor here uh, as you may have noticed uh, this is quite good looking it's the Microsoft uh, expression dark theme that is available in codeplex.com uh, and if we look at the about window here uh, we actually see that this is uh, version 0 0.9 and that means we we haven't finished just everything yet although this looks quite good this application and if I scroll down you can uh, see that I have a little to-do list there but let's close this about window since nobody's really interested uh, in about window. I have previously created uh, a demo file. It has some basic uh, uh, listings for, uh, for example, it has four functions and constants there. Let's open that. So I go to file menu and click open and uh, then I go to select my sample XML here and click open. So it will now load the project and if you Notice this, uh, uh, my new file appeared here on the top side as a new tab. We are using tab like uh, user interface here. Uh, I'm, I can click this uh, empty project here. Uh, I can use a, a menu or keyboard shortcut here. I'm going to close that. Uh, so that leaves with our little sample here. Uh, and let's take a look at this uh, list here. Uh, well. Uh, I actually said that uh, we, we have functions and constant lists here, they have different views, but let's first walk through with the function list here. Okay, so uh, uh, let's open this end uh, command here. It's uh, actually a, a sub program, it doesn't uh, return any value, and so its return type is set void. 
Uh, now you may recognize void from other programming languages such as C and, and the such. And uh, you can uh, only select void return type for functions. You cannot use it on, uh, for parameters or, or constants here. But uh, in the end, end is uh, quite a boring command because it doesn't take any parameters. So let's open this load object instead. By the way, I can uh, o expand this, this, these um, different functions uh, freely, but uh, for clarity's sake, I am going to uh, handle only one at a time. So, uh, if we take a look at this load object command, it, uh, its return time is integer, and its uh, function item uh, also has some more information. For example, this internal ID, uh, it's a running uh, incremental number that uh, that will update every time you uh, actually add a new uh, function. And then we have a list of parameters here, as opposed to the end, end command didn't have any. Uh, this particular uh, function load object has one parameter, it's named file name and it's of type string. And uh, each parameter also has this, have this um, two buttons here, they are move down and up. And uh, we we have an expandable area here, saving, saving uh, additional options if we expand it. We reveal this is optional uh, checkbox here. If I check it, I can uh, write that default value for this optional parameter. But let's leave it be like so, and let's go to some function that has uh, actually more parameters than one. Uh, and we navigate to the move object uh, command here, uh, or function. Uh, and just uh, just to show you uh, how to reorder this uh, parameter list, I'm going to move the object, object uh, parameter, which is the first one in the list, all the way to the bottom by clicking this button once and twice and it's now on the button and then I want to move the Y parameter up so I click once this button okay so it's there now and notice that when we whenever we uh, do any changes to the, uh, to the lists uh, for example add a new parameter or delete one suppose I, I wanted to delete this X parameter here well, what the hell, Let, let's just do that. Okay, I click that, it disappeared from the list, and notice that the status bar uh, indicates this change. I, it says that I remove parameter X. Uh, in the equivalent way, if we added a new par uh, function, it would say that I added a new function. I will show that to you in, in a, just a sec. Uh, actually, let's go, well, yeah. Uh, another thing that uh, indicates change, this uh, little wrench icon here appeared on the tab header. Uh, that indicates that the file has changed somehow and the save action in the file menu is now uh, enabled. What I'm going to do next is to add our own function. I'm going to focus this uh, text box right uh, next to the new label here and type my function. I could uh, hit the return key or just add this uh, or click this add button here. If I click it, uh, my function appears here down the list. Uh, the list is uh, ordered alphabetically, so when I uh, added my new function, it uh, appeared in the appropriate right uh, uh, position automatically. So let's, in the, in the same way, we can add parameters, but let's first uh, see that internal ID. We had four functions uh, previously, now we have five, and this internal ID has increased to five. Let's add uh, four parameters now. Param1, I click add, and then param2, I click add, and param3, and I click add. And suppose I want to make the final parameter, param3, uh, optional, I'm going to change it to float and type some value in it. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, all about functions. Uh, both function and constant views uh, have this counter that uh, that's a handy indicator of how many functions or constants we have in, in this definition file. But let's go to constant view next. Uh, this is 
pretty much uh, or much more simpler than the uh, functionalist. It, it bears in comparison. And uh, I can add a new uh, constant in the same way. For example, I will add mouse uh, left. I click add. And I add another one. Mouse right. I just hit the enter key now. Okay, so we have two new constants, uh, both of type integer. Integer is the default type for all uh, new uh, entities or symbols. Okay, so I put my values here and uh, I want to add some asked uh, uh, constant, but since I don't really need it, I will delete it. Okay, uh, you may also notice this uh, uh, filter text box here. It's actually something on my to-do list. Uh, it, it doesn't work yet, but uh, it's intended to quickly search and filter out soon to be long lists. Okay, so this is, uh, I think our little uh, definition file is now done. So what I'm going to do now is go to the file menu and click save as. And uh, I'm going to name my new definition file extended. I don't want to overwrite this sample XML. I click the save button. And if we navigate to the created file here and open our extended XML to edit the uh, notepad. Whoops. No. No. Uh, actually, I screwed up. Let's let's reopen it. Okay, so here it is. This is a pretty straightforward XML. It has uh, just a hierarchical list of our functions, and down here uh, the constants. And you can see our most right and left uh, constants are there with the respective values that we defined. And uh, if we scroll a bit up here. There is uh, our my function, new function, with all the three parameters we defined. Okay, so this is uh, quite simple. Let's close this one. But uh, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the video, we uh, the compilers also need these definition files, and XML is quite slowish to parse and read. So we have here on the file menu an export command. I can here uh, export a compiler binary definition file. Its uh, structure is similar to XML, but it also has those uh, helper uh, uh, records, such as file offsets for fast seeking and reading. So if we name this one, we, we are saving this to the same uh, folder, extended, and we use the default uh, file extension of FW, which stands for framework. I click save, and it, it now appears in the uh, target location. You can see that the difference in file size is notable, and it will be more notable when we have long lists. And if we inspect our framework file here, it's gibberish. Okay, but this isn't intended for human read. Let's close this one. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, in a fast pace demonstration of all the future of, uh, features of the software. Okay, so this concludes my introduction of the framework definition editor for CoolBase Game Engine. I'm Jukka Launen from CoolBasic organization. I hope you guys enjoyed and please join next time.